Welcome to Autographers Anonymous, a place where we discuss our addiction to the greatest hobby in the world. Let's go around the room. <laughs> Hold on, I'm, I'm waiting for somebody else to start. Oh, now it's me. Uh, What's up, guys? Mike from the Autograph Network, aka The Godfather, and I'm the only other person here. So, yeah, throw it over to Zane Savage. Yep. Well, you gave it away. I'm <laughs> Zane Savage, and all I have to say is. Mmm, yum. Chase tastes good. <laughs> so uh, that's the swag I was talking about last week. I got me an Autographers Anonymous mug, and uh, I am drinking out of it, and it's delicious. And I thought I'd make it creepy by saying I drink out of Chase. So there's that. Delicious. Yep, very delicious. Um, let's go ahead and start things off with new returns. Mike? All right. I guess I'll go first. Um, let's start with the first failure, um, get this out of the way. What I'm doing, guys, I have a crap ton of uh, trading cards. If you guys have followed me on YouTube, I bought like 18,000 trading cards. So instead of them sitting around collecting dust, I'm trying to send them out. If I have a card, I'm going to send it out. Tried Reggie Jackson on this vintage card. Came back, obviously, unsigned with a nice letter from the Mr. October Foundation. I think that's his handwriting too. Like <laughs> it might be. Like I, I actually compared that once, and it was very similar. So there's a possibility that he's writing those. There you go. Um, just I'll give you a quick rundown. If you're going to send to him, he wants uh, seventy-five dollars per item for autograph balls, cards, photos, magazines, books. One twenty-five for bats and jerseys. Additional inscriptions, Mister October or Hall of Fame ninety-three is an additional twenty dollars, and you can make it out to the uh, Mister October Foundation for Kids, and you guys can look. That up if you want to send to him, so it goes to a good cost. You your soul too, so, <laughs> so try, too. tried. Why not? Cost me fifty cents to try and get Mister October. I did include a donation, just wasn't seventy five dollars worth. Um, let's do the cards. Like I said, I'm sending some stuff out that's been sitting around collecting dust, so why not try and get it autographed? And got this guy, Sean Dunstan, on the eighty eight Don Russ, which is not the set Troy is doing. And every time I get one of these in, I contact him I'm like do you need this card he's like no and then i realize he's doing the 91 don russ looks very similar um ended up signing four he's doing some work with the san francisco giants so you can send to the stadium if you want his autograph and the whole reason i sent to him this was one of my favorite cards growing up the 85 don russ rated rookie dunston had a, a cannon so uh just fyi we had our first chat Carl Donahue says he loves the show. I yep. saw it pop up. So thanks, Carl, for testing that out. Like I said, we're we're playing around with this new format. So very cool. Um, I did send to Al Kaline again, and he actually signed two with donation. Uh, Kaline is pretty much cash only. If you send cash, good return. Uh, this is the 83 Don Russ Hall of Fame card. But I also had this guy, which is... Um, I don't remember what year, but it's a vintage tops card. So Weird. does he give the garbage signature anymore? Uh, I think if, if you send cash, cash is king with him. Uh, yeah. Cause I, I never sent a donation and I got the garbage sig. So yeah, maybe I mean, that, wrong. that looks solid for a K line. Oh, yeah. there. Especially so. now he's like, like 90 or something. Yeah. He's got to be pushing that. Um, speaking of beautiful handwriting, um, I sent two cards and he ended up sending three back, but this is Ted Giannos and he is the world famous San Diego chicken. So this is a vintage card. I sent that one and this one and just FYI, he's, he's a great guy. I uh, met him in the minors when I was a clubhouse manager and just a fantastic guy. Um, and his handwriting is beautiful, but he sent this card. So that's a double of that one. Uh, here is triple play. Cool shot there. And he sent this one, which is actually a Cecil Fielder card, but there's the San Diego chicken doing that's his thing. That's card. That's yeah. cool. So he sent that. So nice fan and sent some extras. Um, that wraps it up for cards. Let's go on to the four by six photos. Uh, actor David Garrison. He actually played Steve Rhodes in Married with Children. 
he was married to Darcy there in the original cast. Nice shot there. Second one. And his it's funny because his last name, how they spelled it on the show, is actually how we spell our last name, which is kind of a unique way to s- spell Rhodes. Uh, I was also in, what is this? Uh, it's Your Move. And anybody recognize that young little guy right there? Oh, man. Uh, Keaton? No. Jason I Bateman. I don't know you. Oh, Jason Bateman. Okay. So, pretty cool. Um, in the Racing Hall of Fame, IndyCar winner, Johnny Rutherford. Cool black and white shot. That's him out in the lead. And you got some quality signatures, like stylistic, stylistically. Yeah, they um, have a time. couple more coming up, too. Uh, here's cool black and white shot. Well, you got and, Mary Costa? <laughs> nope, I got her in the past. She's That's that's calligraphy right there. Uh, here he is at the Brickyard. You can tell by the Bricks, Indy Brickyard there, winner. This one is very cool. This is Dan Bouchard. But again, check out his signature. Takes his time. Uh, nice black and white hockey shot there. He was a goaltender for the Nordiques and also for the Flames. Cool shot. Check out the helmet. Old school hockey there. But uh, draws a little face. Very loopy. And the uh, Bible inscription up there. And a blown up card here. A little tougher to see, but very cool. Uh, astronauts again, same same setup. Uh, this is George Nelson. Here's the official promo that they they take every time they uh, do a flight. The generic shuttle launch, and then I try and find something from one of their missions. Here he is doing one of his spacewalks. So just okay. cool. Yeah, I just I, I, you said you you know you've got several of those, and that just reminded me of something an idea. To actually make, a, uh, you can do four by six photos. Trading cards are probably better, but if you could do customs, have people sign customs. Um, I don't know if you can maybe tint a certain photo a certain color, or you could just do a generic background of a color. And when you put those cards together on a wall, they make like the American flag or something like that. That would be awesome to have, like as dis- a, d- a display piece. Yeah, where you can, I, I think they call it like mosaic or something. Mosaic, where, yes. Yeah, where you can make an image out of images. It's, that would be cool. It would take some planning. And if you can get <laughs> one back, you'd probably be pretty mad. But yeah, sign it. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, Ken Reitler. Again, there's the official NASA headshot, the generic space shuttle launch sign there in the thrust. And here's them walking out to the, the shuttle launch pad. So very cool. Uh, I've got one of the greatest TTM signers ever. Had to get Richard Petty. Uh, the there's, yeah, the king. And not just on the racetrack, but you send him something, he will sign it. Beautiful signature again. Just, I mean, you're talking about beautiful, beautiful takes his time. Guys respect the autograph. Um, this is a cool shot. It's kind of hard to see. I uh, signed it in the white there, but crash photo. And I love this card because it's done in the style of the, the 85 Don Ross, but that looks pretty awesome. So very cool. Uh, did send a donation with this guy, but Hall of Famer football, Mike Haynes. I, I think I sent 10 bucks. Got to love the blown up cards. Yep. <laughs> TTM classic. Oh, yeah. Cost me 10 cents. Mm-hmm. Uh, here's a cool action shot signed in silver. Actually turned out really good. And one more action photo. So nice to add a Hall of Famer. Um, I did get one back. And if you guys watch my videos, not my SASE. So that usually means an 8 by 10 He did sign my photos. Uh, This is Mike Henry. You guys might not recognize the name, but if you ever watched Family Guy, he's the voice of Cleveland. Uh, Signed it there, and if you can see over here, he wrote, oops. Looks like he was going to sign on this side and realize it'd probably run into the dark part of his hair, so he ended up changing sides, which is cool. 
I believe he's um, a white guy too. He is white. Yeah. Cleveland yeah. is white. Yeah. <laughs> um, he does all these voices. This is just a horribly cropped photo. Um, I'll show you something better here, but he does all these characters. So there he is in the booth. They did a Star Wars parody and played R2 D2. Wait, okay, so he does the uh, he does the old grandpa? Yeah. The creepy so let grandpa. Me, let, me, let me show you this one here. He sent this is the eight by ten I got. So this is a much better looking photo. So that one. Hey. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> the old guy, young Cleveland, Rosita. Oh no, mister. And then the greased up deaf guy. Now, here's something that would be fun. Uh, send a popsicle box to him. Because that's like <laughs> his, his catchphrase with yeah. the old man. You want a popsicle? Hey, Chris, you want a popsicle? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a great show. Yeah. So I think that's it. It was actually a slower week for TTMs. Um, I don't think I had any purchases come in. Uh, work has been horrible so it's cutting into my ttm time um but i'm sending summer stuff time out. supposed yeah. to be a good good time you would think uh, so so yeah you never end up with extra time and so at least we i don't no. um, yeah i i got nothing ttm sadly well i haven't sent anything off in months um and i really didn't get anything to show off uh with the business so uh we're gonna go ahead and move on to our favorite named uh topic of the show ttm tool review Tool review. The best name. <laughs> I'm actually going to take it this week. Um, I'm going to talk about the informed delivery from the United States Postal Office. I use it. Uh, it's fantastic for TTMers. If you guys don't know what it is, go to UPS or USPS, United States Postal System, dot com, um, and you can sign up. It's free. All you got to do is create an account. Uh, they verify your information, and then what you do is, is you get notifications. I get them sent email, and if you get a letter-sized envelope like this, what they do is they actually scan the front and uh, send you an image in grayscale of this. So basically, this is what I see, um, and I know it's coming. Um, usually comes in the morning. My mail guy... He, we're like the last stop. So he usually doesn't deliver until five o'clock. So usually by eight o'clock in the morning, I know what's coming in my mailbox. Um, you get secure access. Uh, you get to see what letters are coming by scan. They'll also tell you what packages are coming by the tracking number. Uh, you won't see the image because they can't scan it if it's not letter size, but they will inform you what packages will come. So if you use eBay or you know if you're running a business, you know, you can send that. Um, so you get a preview, like I said, in grayscale images of the exterior, address size of the label. Uh, you can track your packages, uh, check the delivery status of packages and when they will be scheduled to arrive. So like if I'm getting a package from eBay and it's scheduled for tomorrow, it will say, you know, coming, coming soon. So that's, that's a cool thing. Um, I haven't used this, but <clears throat> this is listed on their site. Delivery instructions. Uh, you can leave uh, delivery instructions if you won't be home to accept a package. Uh, you can reschedule a redelivery. If you miss the delivery, you can schedule a package to be redelivered. And you can manage your notifications. So you can set up email or get text notifications to track and uh, track the delivery of your status of packages. So Dude, I think that rules me out because like I get so many packages, my email will be blowing up, man. I don't think I can handle that much uh, information. Right, it comes in one email. So it, it will like my images. If I get, let's say I get 10 TTMs in one day, uh, it's one email from the United States postal service. And so it's not each individual one gets sent to you. It's just oh, okay. one, one email, but they'll scan, you know, you open it up and it will show you 10 images. And let's say you're getting two packages that day coming coming today, two packages from, you know, eBay or whatever, it will give you the tracking number. So um, I think, I think it's a cool, cool thing. You know, if you want to know what's coming, um, I don't, I don't list on my addresses or my envelopes. I put my address label up in the return corner too. That way, if there's any problems, uh, it gets redirected to me and not back to who I sent it to. Right. So, I mean, I, I don't know who it's coming from, 
but I get excited because every day I'm like, Oh, I got, I should have, you know, two TTMs. So. And this it, seems like a good way to prevent, uh, anybody that has like mail theft, uh, <laughs> issues. Uh, this was, this would be a good way to document what's coming in. Cause if it's going through a, a scanning system, um, it's probably getting scanned in at the, uh, sorting center, not the post office. And I, I will say this is it's not 100% accurate either. Um, sometimes you'll get double scans. So like, let's say this envelope, you know, either gets creased or something, uh, it magically shows up twice or sometimes, you know, it, you see something that's supposed to be delivered and it doesn't show up in your mailbox, but then it shows up the next day. So, I mean, it, it's, it's not a hundred percent, but it, it's a cool tool to use because for me, I, I send out so much stuff. Like I said, I don't know who it is, but I know when I get home from work that I should have a couple autographs. So just, just something for, you know, TTMers out there to kind of track. And like you said, it can prevent some, some mail fraud um, or, you know, if you, think your neighbor is stealing your packages or something. Right. You have documentation to prove that it was actually delivered to your post office, but didn't get to you. Right. So um, that's cool. I, I'm going to, I'm going to have to do it. I've been saying that for the last few months, but uh, you say you can sign up online, right? Yep. If you go to USPS.com, which is the United States postal service official website, you can sign up for free. Uh, just create the account. They'll verify your information. And you'll start receiving email notifications. Well, I, I have a very small post office, so if my people at my post office have to do anything extra, they're going to hate me, <laughs> but I might do it anyway. Um, there you go. Let's go ahead and move on to our topic for today, and that is the state of the autograph market. Uh, kind of like the state of the union, uh, but there's a couple things we wanted to hit on this. Um, the main topic that we wanted to hit on the state of the market was flooding, and that's our first subtopic. Um, so... Um, is the market flooded right now? I'll go ahead and answer yes, it is. Um, and is that a good thing? Uh, if you're a buyer, yeah, it's a great thing. Uh, if you're a seller, it sucks right now. Um, it sucked the last, I've had some problems for, for about the, the last year. Um, but uh, how are you feeling on, on, on the market being flooded? Actually, let me switch back to an even view here. I had you, uh, I'm the one talking. We should have e uh, an even view. Uh, it's going to take some getting used to with this uh, this broadcaster guy. So hang in there. Uh, apologize if there's any malfunctions. Um, but what do you think? Uh, you think the market's kind of flooded right now? Good for buyers? I, th I think it is flooded. Um, <clears throat> it, it is good for buyers, but the problem with the market being flooded is, we'll talk talk about this on a subtopic, but is the market flooded with good stuff? Is it, is it all authentic? Well, Carl <laughs> says uh, he feels like there's a ton of great buys because of all the fakes. Uh, I would say the market is not flooded because of fakes, because if you go back to look at like 1998, 1999, 2000, um, the market was... Uh, flooded with fakes and the prices were sky high still with the fakes. So, um, I don't think the market's flooded with fakes. Um, it, there definitely are fakes. We'll talk about that down the line. There's as, as actually another subtopic, but, um, yeah, it's, I think it's mostly people that give out their autograph utilizing the market. So, uh, people realize that their autograph is a commodity and, um, I've seen some interesting people sign TTM that I didn't think would. Um, I thought TTMing would start drying up eventually uh, when I got out of the hobby, I don't know, five, six years ago. I, I started seeing some signs of the TTM hobby starting to dwindle. And I was like, well, people are going to start util utilizing uh, their signatures for a profit instead of just giving away for free. But what instead what we've seen is people uh, using it to promote things a lot. Um, playbills are a good example of that. Um, you write to a, a play and most of the time they'll send you a signed play bill back for free. Sometimes they charge, um, but it, they use that as promotion for the play or a musical. Um, so people are getting creative with the way they use autographs. And, um, 
the 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 market. Uh, I think people are more knowledgeable uh, too. There's a lot more information out there. A lot of different places you can get information, such as our podcast, or uh, more importantly, Star Tiger, or the, all the uh, autograph forums on Facebook. Um, there's a wealth of information, and that information was not there before. So people are smarter. People are buying smarter, um, and there's just a ton of money going into autographs in general. And those autographs got to go somewhere. And they get put on the market, and you know, um, yeah. I've seen prices dive the last yeah. year. I mean, you, you talked about being a seller and how the flooding hurts. As, as a collector, though, too, I mean, flooding hurts me as a collector because I I'm collecting, but I'm I'm hoping somewhere down the road that what I have will hold its value and increase in value over time. Right. But when you know, we we talked about Jim Lovell. You know, he for years he he didn't sign unless it was his book. And then all of a sudden, boom, he's signing, he signed everything for a, a short window. So the market got flooded. It, you know, drove his price down, but as a collector, it, it devalued what I have in my collection too. Yep. And I used to sell a ton of level stuff. And since he started TTMing, I was like, it was stupid to buy level stuff anymore because I wasn't going to make any profit. I mean, I would make a little, but it wouldn't be worth my time. Yeah. Um, so I, and I, I, in general, like, I feel the hobby is healthier when we worry about the buyers instead of the sellers, even though I am a seller, I think, uh, when somebody can get something they want, that's a good thing. Um, so I just have to adapt as a seller to the market and with any market, you're going to have ups and downs. So this whole market being flooded is probably not going to stay flooded. What's probably going to happen I think a few years ago you saw a rise in like digital signatures or whatever. Um, and that kind of probably cut into the market a little bit. People were thinking, Oh, well, you know, regular autographs are gone. Now we're going to start doing this digital signature where people sign on an iPad. And what they came to find out was people much prefer a, a video uh, like cameo with the person talking instead of uh, some fake signature on an iPad. It's not fake, but it's um I guess it'd be like an auto pen almost like a digital auto pen. Um, well, it's not even that cause it's an actual signature that they signed on the other side. So anyways, I don't see that anywhere anymore. I think MLB implemented some program a few years ago and I, I haven't seen anything from that. So um, I don't know these, these d different fads influence the market a lot and uh, conventions are another thing that have helped flood the market. Uh, when people go to conventions, you always hit the autograph booths. And uh, if those people weren't at the autograph booth, they'd be at home and they might be signing some TTMs, but they aren't signing as much as they would be if they're sitting at a freaking convention. Um, so all that stuff goes into the uh, where the market sits. Um, and I, we, we've talked about this in the past on, I think, TTM tool reviews. You have all these services like... Um, like a loot crate and you know all these mystery crates that send you there's usually an autographed item in there and right. you know for them to service thousands of people they're they're having a celebrity sign a thousand photos to sell their their box or their crate whatever you want to call it and uh, yep. stuff stuff like that people buy because they want you know the limited edition items but stuff like that's going to flood the market too. So there's, there's a lot of different services that have popped up and we've talked about some of them on previous podcasts that I thought about two more, two more, sorry to interrupt, yep. uh, two more. So private signings have uh, jumped up like crazy with the advent of Facebook and the forums. Like I see private signings everywhere. Um, there was only a few places you'd go for that, um, before. Um, and the biggest one is trading cards and, um, the, advent of cheap trading cards, especially entertainment uh, cards that are signed, like Pop Century, stuff like that. Uh, we've talked about how once somebody is in the Pop Century set, uh, their autograph value goes down quite a bit because if you want one, that's the entry level as a trading card. And you can get a certified trading card and those usually go for dirt cheap unless they're a gigantic name. So uh, those are two big things that have influenced the market in the last few years. Um, but uh, like I said, it's going to go up. It's going to go down. I think we're definitely going to be flooded for a while. I don't see any way of reversing it right now, but, uh, there'll be something that comes along that'll knock it down. Maybe it may be a crackdown on COAs. 
Uh, California has passed a law where you have to have a COA uh, when you sell an autograph. Uh, so uh, we could see more laws like that that crack down on, try try to crack down on fakes. I don't agree with necessarily the way they go about that because anybody can create a COA. Um, and there's, there's definitely flaws in that system. Um, but as you see people try to crack down on forgeries, maybe some of that stuff starts knocking down the market. Um, and as people drift away from maybe just signatures into more of uh, I just want a photo with a person or a, a video. So we'll see. Um, moving on to the next subtopic of the market, uh, authenticity percentage. And uh, I brought up the late 90s, early 2000s, because that's when Project Bullpen was like at its peak. And um, I remember on eBay, man, it was like Maguire Sosa. Like every single signature was a Maguire Sosa. And this stuff was selling. If you guys weren't around back then, if you guys are youngsters, uh, Maguire and Sosa was kind of, uh, in my in my day, the peak of memorabilia. Um, that stuff was flying off the shelves. People, grandmas, just saw the frenzy and would buy autographs off eBay uh, just to have or give to their grandsons because they were big fans. Um, it was kind of like a, a, it was a, it was a craze. It was like the beanie, ba beanie baby craze around the same time. Um, so that drives up whenever there's a craze, the market, uh, prices go up like crazy. Uh, and with the market prices going up, the forgeries skyrocketed. And if you guys haven't seen the documentary on, uh, project bullpen, definitely watch it. It's eye opening, and it shows you how crazy it was back then. But uh, what do you what do you think the market is kind of right right now? Like forgeries when it comes to eBay, I think certified autos, have, you know, cut a big slice into that because they're obviously uh, sticker signed or whatever from a, a already coming from Tops or Upper Deck or whatever. Um, but what do you think? Yeah, where, where are we sitting? It's funny that you bring up Project Bullpen. Like if, if you look at their autographs, I mean, they were spot on, and it's it's pretty amazing how close they were to the authentic signatures. Um, if you look at eBay now, there's a, there's a crap ton of forgeries and some of them are not good. It looks like, you know, a 12 year old took a pen and was like Babe Ruth and it looks nothing like a signature and they're trying to sell it because they, they know if, if they get close, somebody might, you know, they might make a quick buck. Um, so I, I think, the market has changed. Uh, Project Bullpen was a much more sophisticated. I don't think it was back when the internet was as popular. Um, now, you know, there's there's websites like Star Tiger. Everything you can do a lot more research, I think, and find the fakes. But um, with with a marketplace like eBay, you know, there's always going to be flooded with fakes because th someone's always going to try and make a quick buck. Here's what I've noticed. Okay. So like, uh, yeah, there are a ton of fakes that are sold on eBay. Surprisingly, some get pulled down quickly, but if you get like a decent amount of sales under your belt, it's really hard to take like a forger down on eBay. Um, once they're making money, well, once eBay is making money off of them, they're not too happy to take them down. Uh, but people, like you said, people know what they're buying, um, for the most part. Like you're going to have people that see like a $5 Bryce Harper autograph and jump on it. You're always going to have those people. But back in the early days, that, that wouldn't be $5. That would be bid up to, you know, 50 bucks, 60 bucks. Those autographs that are obvious fakes still stay around the low, like stay around the, the like the low prices, the stuff where people are either taking a chance on it, which you know, or they don't care about authenticity or they just don't know. Yeah. Um, I, I, I think that's the big thing is like the people that are buying, you know, a, a $5 Bryce Harper on eBay, those aren't collectors. Those right. are, that's, Hey, my wife's buying this for a birthday present because she knows right. I like Bryce Harper. Right. And, and, and surprisingly those sales don't happen very often. Most of the sales and collectibles collectibles are done by collectors. Um, so those sales of outsiders buying for collectors don't have, and you would think they would, but uh, if you put yourself in the shoes of somebody buying for a collector, um, it's overwhelming to try to figure out what somebody doesn't have and what they would want. And it's just a lot of pressure to put, uh, on a gift giver to get the perfect gift for somebody that knows everything about their, their hobby. So as a seller, I've seen, um, 
a lot less of that than I expected going into, you know, selling autographs. Um, but yeah, I, I think there's plenty of fakes out there, but I think the market's adjusted pretty well to where they don't get that high, that high market price anymore. And forgers, and the probably the reason there are more forgeries is they have to forge more autographs to make as much money as they did before when they could sell them for a higher price. So that probably factors in too. Uh, we'll move on to our last uh, subtopic for this. It's uh, the forecast for the market. And I, I guess I touched on this earlier whenever I said, uh, you know, it has its ups and downs. Um, it's obviously flooded right now, but uh, in 10 years, let's say 10 years, where's the, uh, where's the market going to be? You know, I, I think part of it falls on the celebrity. Like I got to put a little blame on them for the market being flooded too. Um, I, I know some people don't like this term, but there's, there's some channels on Facebook and social networks that are autograph hounds. And it's these guys in New York that will, you know, they know every place these people are going to be and they know what car they're in. They ride bikes next to the car and hound these people and they shove a hundred pieces in front of them and the celebrity signs a hundred pieces. So I think that's part of the problem. I think, I think in 10 years, the celebrities are going to wise up a little bit more and be a little more selective with what they sign. Um, and not just in person. Uh, I think that's going to be TTMs too. Um, you know, somebody sends Wade Boggs right now, 10 cards, you know, he, he may have signed 10 cards in the past in 10 years, you'll be lucky to get one. Um, I, I think the market is just going to dry up a little bit just because people are going to realize if someone's sending a letter for my autograph, it is worth something. Right. And do I, do I want to give you something for free? Um, we, we see it now. I don't want to sign because of eBay. Um, I, I think that trend is just going to slowly, you know, climb up more. Right. But like I said, I, I think part of it's going to fall on, on the celebrities too. They just, if, if they want to curve some of that, they've got to stop signing a hundred items for, you know, quote unquote dealers, you know? Well, we, and that's why, and, and, and that's why I thought we'd already see a decline. That's why I thought five years ago, we'd see a decline and we have a little bit in TTMs, but not in autographs in general. Uh, I still see a lot of people sign an IP and I like to push the, uh, idea of them signing a simple signature for free and a complicated signature for a price. I think that's a perfect middle ground. Uh, so you can still sign for people, but you're just getting your crap signature for free. If they want it, you know, they're nice, pretty flourish on the signature. They can pay money. And those, those signatures will go for a premium. You know, we already see that uh, in the market. So I, I really, want to get that idea out there we've talked to certain people in the industry and, and they agree uh but it's you know people are individuals they're going to make their own decisions on what they wouldn't do yeah I, I think we've seen the start of that um jeremy bullock the guy who played boba fett had a beautiful signature full signature jeremy bullock and he'd signed that in the past you send him something you know he'd sign now if you send him a ttm you get the first name only and it at uh, conventions, you get the full signature. So you, you do, you get what you pay for. So maybe we'll see, maybe we'll start seeing a shift. And this is my hope, because if it's not this, it's probably just a decrease in free signatures in general. Uh, but I'm hoping we see a, a difference in quality and price uh, with almost every signer. And you can make your choice. You can buy a sloppy signature of Daniel Radcliffe for 15 bucks. Or you could buy a really nice signature of Daniel Radcliffe that somebody paid for, for 50 or 60 bucks. Like you'll have that choice as a collector. And uh, it will also, if, if that happens, those signatures that are sloppy aren't going to make as much money as the nice signatures. So the people going after people in the streets for IPing, which, you know, to each their own, everybody has their own, you know, ideas around that. But those signatures aren't going to be worth as much as if you do a private signing and they sit down and do their, you know, nice signature. Yeah, so you can already see that happening a little bit, but I'd like it to become a uniform thing with, you know, all celebrities, all sports stars. Like they know, like this is, this is my option. 
um, quantity quantity versus quality. Right. If you if you want me to sign five items, you're going to get the slop. If you want me to sign one, here's a nice pretty signature. Yep, uh, makes sense. Hey, if you guys know any celebrities out there, tell them <laughs> that's what they should do. That's the future of the uh, market. I hope it goes that way because if not, it's going to be on rarity, and that hurts the collector in the long run because it's going to be cost more money to get somebody that you want in your collection. So uh, if we can appease both parties, that's always a good thing. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to fanatic feedback where you guys uh, ask us some questions and we answer them. We got two questions this week. Uh, the first one is coming from Al and Al asks, uh, if for some reason autographs could not be your hobby anymore, what would be your new hobby? Um, uh, all right, Mike, what's your new hobby? If uh, yeah. autographs are out the window. Sure. Uh, it wouldn't be, you know, it, we do this as a hobby. If you guys don't know, we live in Orlando, Florida, which is the theme park capital of the world. So we, we go to Disney constantly. We have annual passes. Um, we collect and trade Disney pins. So that's, we've, we've treated it like a hobby. It's something fun we do at the park. It's kind of part of the experience, but there's, there's a, just like autographs, there's a whole online community, um, people all over the world that do this. So that that's something that I do and would do if I didn't collect autographs. Cause I mean, that's what we live here. So <laughs> you'd be a dirty, dirty dealer too. Wouldn't you? Yeah, I would. I am. <laughs> I am. You want, you want these limited editions. I can get them for you. <laughs> uh, for me, I think it would probably be, well, we'll take sports cards out of the, the frame because I feel like that kind of falls in line with autographs. It's kind of almost one world. Um, they have their separate parts, but uh, I would say maybe LP collecting. Um, I have an LP player. Um, I, I would like to up I, like the money I spend on autographs would probably be put toward like classic LPs. Would hold on. Would would you explain to the young kids what an LP is? Yeah, a record. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a giant seat black CD. <laughs> okay. No, it's uh, it's got grooves on it, and um, the LP player reads the grooves and it plays the music. <laughs> um, so I would probably start a collection of LPs uh, with the high quality sound and enjoy that. But um, putting your money, whenever you start a hobby, money is the biggest thing that goes into your hobby, and uh, it's hard to sometimes adjust where that money goes, especially if you have two or more hobbies. So. Uh, yeah, that's definitely my choice. Um, next question comes from Money Mike. And uh, Mike's getting a little creative here. Uh, Mike says, Mike here, but you thought you'd not hear from me this week. So let's get started. All right, Mike. Um, I've been collecting autographs for a long time and hold a vast wealth of knowledge regarding TTM and IP autographs and uh, just about any type of autograph. Therefore, he has been dubbed the TTM Godfather. Okay. Uh, now here's, he, here's his beef. He wants to challenge the other so-called TTM Godfather to a TTM knowledge off for superior reign of the uh, title TTM Godfather. Also, he wrote in last week and asked about celebrities stopping, uh, stop them stopping. So Excuse me, <laughs> them choosing to stop signing TTM, and uh, he brought up Grace Slick, and uh, he says it seems as though she decided to start signing again, just like we said she probably would. Uh, those those people that decide to stop signing TTM because of eBay, uh, they usually go in cycles. Sometimes it's for good, but usually it's cycles. So uh, then he says, ding, ding, ding. So um, yeah, Mike, you got a competitor here for the Godfather. All right, I got it now. Um, like any good nickname, I was not, I was, I was given that I wasn't, you know, that's not something that I came up with. Um, just give you some background real quick. I, I started collecting my first TTM was in second grade. Uh, we did one of those class writing projects where we pick somebody out of, you know, like, a tiger beat magazine and we wrote to him. Mine was Mr. T. I still have the autograph somewhere. Um, so I'm 40, 42, 43 years old. So I, I've been doing this a long time, and I, I, when I when I say I'm the Godfather, you know, I was given that nickname by a fellow YouTuber years and years ago, and it probably sounds better than the TTM Grandfather because that's how long I've been doing this, and you know, it's just. <laughs> 
So the it, TTM grandfather. The grandfather. <laughs> I'm starting to look like it though. I get some gray oh, hair. Me too, so. man. Me too. <laughs> but no, <laughs> if, if, if you want to go grays. If, if you want to go 10 rounds, I'll, I'll go 10 rounds with, with some TTM <laughs> knowledge. Nice. Um, okay, guys, let's go ahead and announce the giveaway winner for uh, our last show. And the giveaway winner who wins the 10 uh, sketch cards. Mike's holding them up right now. All right there. The winner is Megan Thompson. Megan Thompson, congratulations. Uh, and her answer for what is your favorite sketch or doodle that you received. Uh, it was via TTM a long time ago. Marcus Hamilton of Dennis the Menace fame. Very shortly after he took over for Hank Ketchum's daily cartoon. So that's her favorite doodle sketch, TTM, or IP we put in there. Because we know some of you dirty IPers watch the show, too, or listen to the show on iTunes. Um, all right, guys. Uh, the giveaway for this week is this beautiful Jason Biggs autograph. You may know him from American Pie and also Orange is the New Black. Um, so signed 8 by 10 right there. Um, if you want to win this, all you have to do is go to our website, autographersanonymous.com. That's autographersanonymous.com. Or you can go to graphersaa.com, graphersaa.com. Both sites take you to the same place. Click the link on the right uh, and fill out the form and answer this question. What is your most embarrassing TTM or IP moment? What is your most embarrassing TTM or IP moment? And I picked that because American Pie. So if you guys have seen American <laughs> Pie, that's so it jogged the question. Um, so again, what is your most embarrassing TTM or IP moment? Go to our website, autographersanonymous.com. Click the link on the right and enter the question and fill out the form. Um, all right. Now it's time to pick who we're going to have the case against next week. Um, we've actually going to, we're going to do this a little different this week. Um, Mike has come up with a new idea for the case against and Mike, do you want to talk about your new idea? Sure. So we, we constantly talk about project bullpen, which was a huge deal in the memorabilia community and it was years back, but some of the biggest fakes that came out of there were Mickey Mantle and Ted Williams. Um, so we, we decided to do an old school, not TTM related, but we want to do where we compare real autographs to fake autographs and kind of give you guys a case against real and fake. What we think is a real Ted Williams and Mickey Mantle or a fake one. And uh, we can bring up some project bullpen examples and some legit ones. Right. So that we always want to do a poll when we do the case against. So we have the old, uh, t the case against old school. That's one choice. And against the case against old school, we're gonna have Henry Winkler, the Fonz. Who's my Who's my new Bob Dole? <laughs> okay, so um, that's our new idea, guys. The case against old school. We'll probably do what? Do you, what do you say? Mantle and Williams. Mantle and Williams are the Those two, are the two ones. most. Yeah, yeah, the biggest ones. So and and like he said, we're just gonna identify some of the uh, the known uh, signature points on authentic Williams and Mantles, and some of the dead giveaways of fake. Manuel and Williams. Um, and that's going up against Henry Winkler. And that would be a normal um, case against. So uh, if you want to vote for that, you can go to our Twitter, our Facebook, uh, or our website um, and vote in the poll. And the winner of the poll is what we'll do. Um, you have one week to enter after the podcast is broadcast. Hey, that rhymed. Um, that gives us a week to prep for the next case against. So, uh, guys, go check that out. And um, with that being said, guys, I, I, I know that was a, a quick show, but we only have two guys on this one. Hopefully, we'll have the gang back uh, in two weeks. This is a bi-weekly show. Thanks to everybody that watched on Twitch for the first time. Uh, really appreciate it. Uh, we're, I think this worked out pretty well. Uh, the, the chat interaction is pretty cool over here. So, uh, that's at twitch.tv. You can find the link to our Twitch page on our uh, main page, autographersanonymous.com. And uh, remember to go to our website also to do fanatic feedback. Uh, send us those questions for our next show. We'll answer them live on air. And uh, it's promotion time. What do you think, Mikey? 
Well, it's easy. Just go to autographersanonymous.com and you can find the links to everybody. Uh, kudos to Mr. Savage here who has done everything on the website. It looks fantastic. You guys saw his swag uh, cup. That's pretty cool. You got that done. The picture is on the website, but it's got everyone's links. Uh, my YouTube, uh, TTM Troy, Chasing Inc. on uh, YouTube. Uh, you can also check out autograph, Autographs for a Cure. Uh, like you said, the Case Against Poll, the Fanatic Feedback. Everything's there. One-stop shopping for everything. Yep. And uh, check me out uh, on Etsy with uh, Fabric Fobs. Get a piece of celebrity clothing and a keychain. It's freaking awesome. <laughs> and then uh, on uh, eBay, Bargain History, um, I sell autographed mat pieces, autographed books, um, and starting to dabble in other pieces of history that aren't even autographed. So uh, go check that out, guys. Again, autographersanonymous.com. That's where you can find everything. Thanks for watching our first show on Twitch. And you take care, all of you autograph addicts.